Jesus. Well, you can tell this was not taken care of. Look at how dirty that filter is. Welcome back to a new video. So in today's video, we are hopping back on the CH-150. And if you couldn't tell from the beginning of this video, we are in the process of stripping it down and getting all the damage and different brackets and parts off of it so that we can strip the frame from the engine and uh, address the rust issues on the frame. Now I have used Pour 15 in the past on some of my previous projects. I think I've actually used it on the channel a couple of times maybe. Um, but Pour 15 looks like it's going to be just what I need for this frame. There's no rot or anything like that, just uh, some surface rust, some uh, rust issues that I don't want to get any worse. So uh, if we take the time to prep everything right, Pour 15 should be just fine. And what I mean by that is uh, the worst part of the rust on this frame seems to be up here by the battery box. Oh, there you go. Seems to be uh, up here by the battery box. I'm going to remove the gas tank. We'll check underneath there. But uh, for the most part, the frame's in okay shape, and I think Pour 15 will pretty much do the trick. Um, that way it's going to save us some money and save us some time and actually already have Pour 15 ready to go so we can get on this ASAP. So a couple of other things I wanted to mention on the scooter before we get back onto it is the condition of the frame. So, uh, you know, rust is one thing, but I was very, very worried that I had a bent frame, mainly because the radiator took a pretty massive hit up there in the front and with all the body paneling on it everything seemed to be kind of sitting over to the side well luckily once i got everything off i found that this bracket here is majorly bent so i think this whole bracket which just pops right off of the frame is really all that took the damage and that's why everything looked like it was sitting off to the side so i'm super happy there we already have this part uh, we're going to clean it up and use some port 15 to kind of rejuvenate it as well and then when I put everything back together, hopefully everything will look as straight as possible. And one other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, the handlebars. So I've taken pretty much everything off, including the digital dash. Uh, I really like the digital dash. This one is super beat up because the previous owner or whoever was riding this last just really destroyed it. Uh, it's got some pretty cool information. I like that it's digital, but it's just so freaking big. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to modify this steering stem and I'm gonna try to run a naked handlebar setup. I will post a picture here from the scooter swap shop. This is the owner's old CH150 and I freaking love the look of it. I really wanna to try to run naked handlebars. It's gonna require definitely some fab work and some finagling, but I think that's something we can probably undertake and, uh, and handle just fine. All right guys, with that being said, let's hop back onto the CH-150 and get the frame separated from the engine, maybe the forks uninstalled as well so we can start the Pour 15 process. All right guys, let's get back at it.
Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, that was a lot more than I thought. <laughs> Goodness, dude. Hey guys welcome back so behind me is the ch150 we have it stripped down pretty much completely to the frame and now we have to address a couple of issues one is a bit of frame damage which i think i talked about in the previous little clip here and the other big issue is rust on the frame so let's go ahead and take a closer look and i'll explain kind of the next steps in restoring this frame all right guys so i'm not going to sugarcoat it this frame is in rough shape like i mentioned before this scooter was a parts bike and there's some pretty good indication as to why that was the case so the main issue with this frame well there's two main problems one is actually damage to the frame and the other issue is pretty obvious uh rust is running rampant <laughs> on this frame as you can tell quite a bit of rust down there a lot of rust up here at the battery tray uh, and then just kind of overall in different locations, you'll see uh, rust and some corrosion, all that kind of stuff. This part's actually bent a little bit. However, I will say there is one good thing about this frame, and the frame looks like it's overall straight. The frame itself looks pretty straight. I don't think there's any major bends or damage to the frame, except for there is damage on this motor mount hole right here. And that's what we're gonna tackle next. So the plan for fixing this particular part uh, is basically gonna be just cutting this straight down, straight there, as straight as I can over there, and then taking a piece of thick metal and cutting out a little insert that we can put in here. And it needs to be a little bit rounded kind of towards the bottom and everything. But uh, I'm gonna try to sand this spot down, sand down the metal, and we're gonna try to take both of these pieces, it's actually two pieces of metal, and we're gonna try to weld it into one solid piece, hopefully rebuilding this hole right there that the motor mount goes into. So let's go ahead and pull the scooter into the garage. I'll grab some cutting tools, some spare metal, and we will tackle that cutout on the frame for the engine mount. I think I can tackle it, especially with all of the uh, welding that I did on the A86. So I feel pretty confident that we'll be able to get something that'll work. So let's go ahead and get started on that. And then afterwards, we are going to address the rust issues. All right, guys, let's go ahead and hop back on the CH-150.
Hey guys, welcome back. So I realized I didn't really say much after I repaired the uh, hole on the frame of the CH-150, but I think I've decided that I'm gonna go ahead and powder coat the frame. Reason being is because of a section of rust. I don't know if you saw it when I was talking about it before, but a section of rust that's kind of down in the main portion of the frame. Now, I really wanted to use the Pore 15 solution and do kind of a DIY repair of this frame, but I think because of that rust spot, it's just a little bit too much for me to do. So uh, I just got here to work and hopefully on lunch, I don't know if you can see it in the back, but I have the frame in the back of the Evo. I'm gonna take it up to Epic Coating and Blast, I believe is the name, here in Louisville. I talked with them. Um, the price is, uh, I mean, it's definitely more expensive than Pour 15, uh, but the turnaround time is gonna be around two weeks. So uh, that's okay though, because we have other things we need to do. The forks we're gonna use Pour 15 on. There's a couple of brackets we're going to repair and paint using Pour 15, uh, and a couple of other things. So uh, I, I just feel a little bit more comfortable taking the frame to a powder coating shop and having them actually sandblast it, sandblast all the rust out, and then uh, you know use some powder coat to make a pretty nice finish on the frame. Oh, I got a coworker walking in right now. I gotta go, bye. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I might have accidentally locked myself out of the building this morning, but that's a whole nother point. Anyway, um, so yeah guys, next time you see me, I will be heading off to the powder coaters and uh, I'll take you all along for the ride. And uh, I don't know if we're gonna end the video around this area or if we're gonna do some more work on the CH-150, but we definitely have to wait for the frame to get powder coated before we really do anything else. So um, I guess we will see what happens and I will see you all at the powder coaters. Welcome back. So I think this is a good place to go ahead and end this video. Uh, the last clip that you saw, I took the frame to a local powder coater uh, and I actually just got back from work so I figured I would go ahead and just shoot an outro for this video. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little upset with how much I paid for powder coating. So I don't know if I really went in depth into it earlier in this video, but powder coating here in Kentucky in my area for whatever reason is in my opinion, super expensive. So I went ahead and called a couple of places. I got some quotes on powder coating, but unfortunately the quote that I got was only for the powder coating time. So I assumed, and I mean, I guess call me crazy. I, I just assumed if you get a quote for powder coating, it was gonna include everything that you need to do in order to powder coat something. But apparently uh, the place that I ended up taking the frame to charges by the hour for sandblasting. Uh, as well as money for powder coating the particular item. So unfortunately, the hour of sandblasting wasn't really included in the price that I was quoted, so um, I'm definitely paying a little bit more than I had wanted to in order to powder coat the frame. Now, I still stand by the decision, even though I think it would be a much cheaper option to go with the Pore 15 route. I do think that this frame is corroded enough to where powder coating uh, should probably be done. If not anything, when they sandblast the frame, they'll really be able to see the true, um, I, I guess the true condition of the frame. So I, I told the guy if he sandblasts it and there's part of the actual frame, structural integrity that's been compromised, if there's holes through it or something like that when they blast through all that rust, to just go ahead and stop and I'll pay for whatever sandblasting time they've done. But I don't want to continue if the structural rigidity of the frame has been compromised. So we will see what happens. Um, I'm supposed to hear back from them probably in about a week or two, um, which kind of puts a halt on the progress with this particular scooter. I mean, unfortunately, I'm sure some of you all can relate. These projects tend to turn into a little bit of money pits, but uh, I think the overall result will be well worth it. So even all the money that I spend on this scooter to repair it, I'm also learning in the process, which I don't know you could, if you could really put a price on. So uh, I feel okay about it. Uh, ultimately, the amount of money that I spend on this project probably would be enough to buy a running and driving one but I like the process. I like seeing 
uh, the result at the end. So I don't know. You all be the judge. I decided it's worth it for me. You all have to make that decision if you pick up a project like this for yourself. But with all that being said, we still have a couple of major things that we need to do while we wait for the frame to be powder coated. Uh, I've got a couple of different brackets that need to be sanded down and treated with the Pour 15 solution. So I've already got, I've already paid money for that stuff. So I'm going to use that on some of the miscellaneous brackets and uh, parts of the scooter that were super corroded when I took them off. And then also we have the engine over here that came out of the scooter. Now, this engine, like I mentioned before, this engine has 20,000 plus miles on it. You can tell it has been uh, a rough 20,000 miles. So uh, we're gonna have to do a lot of work on this engine in order to clean it up and see its actual condition. Uh, right now I know it starts, I know it runs, but I have not done a compression test on it or a leak down test. So that may be to come. We'll do that to see exactly what the internals kind of look like on this engine. Uh, but I've got a plan if this engine is totally shot. And here are some of the miscellaneous brackets that I think I will be painting with Pour 15 and going over that solution in the next video, as well as the OEM fork over here. This is the fork. Uh, we're going to be sanding down all the rust on it and just coating this in Pour 15 with a top coat. So I, I think this fork is actually in decent shape. It doesn't look like anything's bent. I don't think we necessarily need to powder coat this. I think the Pour 15 solution will work just fine. So anyway, guys, we've got a lot more to do on this particular project, so please stay tuned. If you like this sort of video and want to see more, please smash that thumbs up button and consider pressing the subscribe button below if you want to be notified when more videos like this come out on the channel. I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel out if you all subscribe and watch till the end. So thanks for sticking around. Anyway, guys, stay tuned for more scooter content, A86 content, motorcycle content, all sorts of stuff in the garage, and until next time, I'll see you later. Now if I could only finish a project, it would be perfect. <laughs> see you later.